This episode of Weed and Grub is brought to you by Quinn. Quinn is an alt cannabinoid brand that offers real THC products, everything from edibles to vapes, and they ship to all 50 states. How do they do that? Well, they can do that because their THC products are all extracted from hemp. All their products are third-party tested, and they use pure, clean ingredients to give you a quality buzz. Check out their super blends of disposable vapes. It's like live resin, but these vapes have a variety of major and minor cannabinoids, including THCO, Delta-8, CBG, and CBN. Check out Quinn online and use our promo code Weed and Grub at checkout to get a special discount for the week of July 4th. It's 40% off. Yeah, visit myquin.com. That's M-Y-Q-W-I-N.com and use code Weed and Grub at checkout to get a discount on Quinn's edibles, vapes, concentrates, and more. 40% off all week of July 4th. Weed and Grub, Quinn, check it out. Shazam. Evidently, there's too much ice cream here at the Top Tree Studio. I'm happy to help. We've been asked <laughs> to do our bit and make a dent in the uh, ice cream freezer, which is like, sounds great. I mean, that's the best thing I've ever been asked to do. Mark, producer Mark, are you addicted to sugar? I yes. am too. Yeah. I am too. It's oh, real. On. Which speaking of, I'm going to grab a little snack Ooh, plug and try this. Can I have one too? Yeah. Thank you. They're Coca-Cola flavored from Haribo. Ooh. Thank you, snack plug. Thank you, the snack plug. Are they all, are they different flavors? The I different believe colors? so. Okay. So I had I had an interesting run in with some ice cream the other day. Okay. Let's hear um, it. Well, you know how Ben and Jerry's is the top carton or the top pint? Yeah. So I um because we had had the the one that has that thick chocolate top to it. I think they're called topped or toppers. Toppers. Mm-hmm. Um I went rogue and I saw that and I was like, I want to try another one. And I tried cookie core. Oh shit. Have you tried a cookie core before? Oh yeah. Have you tried one, Mark? very familiar <laughs> fucking don't if you're anything like mark and i uh, it's dangerous because as it melts you're drinking cookie and mm-hmm. it is a dream come true <laughs> i couldn't even get through an eight minute youtube video before the pint was gone wowzers that's how fast and hard i went wow that yeah. is going so hard i avoid buying the topper too now because i'll just eat that whole and it's magic shell basically which is just like i think the worst substance that you can put into your body yeah i heard i heard whatever the oil is Palm is not oil, good for you yeah something it's real bad these are good yeah thank this you. is delicious thank you the snack plug um i have my own ice cream run in this week i ate two in a row <laughs> uh ice cream sandwiches from trader joe's um I was just, you know, in bed watching Law and Order, trying to, you know, the white noise machine that soothes my soul. And I had an ice cream sandwich and it made me feel better. And then I re- remembered I had another one. So I just housed two. Nice. One after the other. How do you feel after the second? Terrible. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of had a tummy ache. I felt sick. My teeth felt weird. Archie was worried about me. <laughs> Is it the ice cream sandwich with the chocolate chip cookies and then the tiny chocolate chips around it? The tinies. Fucking. It's a very satisfying ice cream sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm willing to do my part here at Top Tree and uh, eat some eat some more. Well, I saw one of the things in there is Tillamook, which is actually an ice cream I haven't had before. I didn't know that. I mean, oh. it only makes sense that they would do everything from cheese to frozen cheese. I only knew that they did cheddar. Right. Yeah. So I would like to actually try uh, Tillamook ice cream. If you're All listening right. to this and you have an ice cream brand <laughs> that you love, not a flavor, but a brand, yeah. get at us. I want to know what's out there. Send it over at Weed and Grub. At Weed and Grub. Yeah. Mary Jane, give them your address. Um. <laughs> I think we use yours for shipping, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We just send us coupons and we'll go buy it at you know, a store. <laughs> what up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? Really good. Let me swallow. Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy. Cannabis. Culture. Cooking. Calling shit out. And um Curry. And Olympian Lisa Curry. And Olympian Lisa Curry. That's right. Sixty <laughs> year old swimming phenom from Australia, Lisa Curry. Who's crushing it in the comedy game. It turns out. <laughs> a lot of talents, multifaceted. Our fantastic guest. So excited to get to our wonderful hang with her. Um, but first, you know, we got some we got some stuff to talk about. We got some news. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also just wanted to shout out Archie, my dog, because he's just been keeping me um, so soothed lately. I just wanted to give him a little extra love on this podcast. It's like if you if you uh, need an extra little Archie hug, please come over. He's he's doing a great job of keeping me calm. Can he sense when you're uh, vibrating at a frequency that might not agree with your normal vibration. His whole body changes. His body language changes. Like his fur is different. It's really interesting. He's he's a, such a little empath. Yeah. 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 Every time you describe uh, Archie as you're familiar, yeah. I can't remember what that movie or TV show or book is that has animal familiars. But I'm I see it more and more between you two. How yeah. How uniquely, universally 
tied you are. I think you might be thinking of the Golden Compass, which is the one yeah. that's I think the most recently sort of yeah, yeah. that everyone has this, the manifestation of their soul outside them in animal form, and they're referred to as demons in uh, the Golden Compass. But I absolutely, and thank mm-hmm. you for being so smart. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You, oh, I, I mean, not to toot my own horn or anything, but the other night I did think it was funny, especially in light of like just having written recently about like sexism and like, you know, how people think of women and all that kind of stuff. I had a guy tell me that um, he was sitting next to me. I was at the, I took myself out to dinner with a crossword and I was sitting at the bar at the Village Idiot and I um, ate a steak and I had a Negroni and I did the crossword like a fucking boss bitch. And um, this guy next to me was like, excuse me, did you just finish that crossword? And I said, yes. And he said, that's very impressive. And I was like, go fuck yourself, dude. (laughs) How dare you? You're right. How dare you talk to me? How dare you talk to me? And also, <laughs> I don't need your... I don't like any of like that. Like your adulation or whatever. I mean, I think he was just looking for an excuse to talk to me. Sure. And that's totally fine. And I can like, absolutely, I'll have a conversation with you. Sure. Like, obviously, I'm not here to have a conversation with anyone because I've got a magazine and a pen. But I just thought it was really funny that he told me that it was impressive that I finished a crossword. And I was like, I think you're probably one of those people who underestimates a lot of people. Yeah. Not only that, but your opening gambit is approval. Like I need <laughs> approval from you. That's how you start with people is like by giving them adulation as if they're seeking it instead of saying something along the lines of like, oh, I also enjoy crossword puzzles. Yeah. I love crossroads. Oh my God. That's awesome. Which one is that? Was it fun to do? Right. Well, which one of the clues? Not pet you on the head and say like, wow, gold star. Oh my God. A girl doing a crossword. <laughs> 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 Fuck that dude. How was it the steak? Made me laugh. The steak was so good. It was good enough that I wanted to have a second one. Nice. Like not right then, but I wanted to go back the next night. I was like, I shouldn't be doing that. It's mm. not good for me. It sounds really good. What was the crossword in uh the back of the New Yorker? Mm-hmm. I've never done that one. Is it as difficult as the New York Times? No, it's it's um fun to do because it's not crazy hard. It's like they'll always say how hard it is in this head, you know, the subhead or whatever it'll be like lightly challenging or you know a little more difficult and that one i think was like yeah pretty yeah. basic yeah cool i love that i uh i cracked open one on my <laughs> flight to kentucky mm-hmm. uh i well you if you ever sit in seat 24e on a united flight to kentucky uh-huh that crossword puzzle is done wow in the back of the magazine was it in the airline magazine yeah, totally so satisfying They're finishing great. a crossword I uh, love them. I knew it was going to be a success story because there were so many blanks. It was like, you know, like blank con or, mm-hmm. you know, let it um, Los Angeles blank. And I'm like, well, it's either going to be Dodgers, like whatever it is. Oh, I love a blank. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, also, you corrected me. This is a good thing to just say thank you, especially because we have such a great comedian on. <laughs> when I was working on that New York Times stand up bit and I go, oh, it's an asp. The, um, the snake that bit uh eve and i remember it got a great laugh and afterwards you very politely gently yet <laughs> formally said that was really funny everyone really laughed uh that snake has to do with cleopatra not <laughs> eve and i was like oh my god thank you like a real new york times moment of accuracy and importance so that i don't sound like an idiot up there it was a great joke and i'm glad that you allowed me to just weigh in on that level it's so funny because like the urge to correct with this one is so strong and i i i am i'm working on it like i really am because i also just read something where it was like you know like correcting people can sometimes be a sign of insecurity like you, you could just live your life you don't need to make sure that everyone else is doing anything that you need them to do yeah so I don't what? correct anyone. I know. And I really appreciate it, that. It's meaningless on most levels. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It truly is. Mm-hmm. Like something like that. If I'm like, what if I record for Netflix and then I'm up there saying like the Asp and Eve, like that sounds bad. Right. That's a shitty thing to have it was not a, It was a worthy correction. Yeah, exactly. A worthy correction for sure. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's the nice. times when... Um, it's the times when it's like, oh, um, I don't think you've been here before. And then somebody's like, actually, you were here six years ago, if you don't remember. Da, 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 da. It's like, like a dad correction. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody I remember cares. my mom used to correct me. There was some argument that we were in and it was like at Christmas. So there were like people over. So it wasn't like in front of a whole bunch of friends and stuff. And she said something that I c- tried to correct because I just learned. It was something about like Queen Elizabeth. And I was at theater school at the time. And so I was like, actually, we just learned in theater school that this is this. And she was like, she snapped back at me so fast. And she 
corrected me and she was like no actually I'm right and I was like okay whatever it doesn't matter I sure and she made me go get the dictionary in front of everyone and pull it out and it turned out she was right and then she like celebrated that in front of everyone and she was like and I was Ew. like this I still remember how crazy it felt I was like whoa Ew. you are in direct competition with me right now that is nuts that's wild mm -hmm. oh I would that would haunt me with every time I wanted to correct someone now a lot of therapy oh <laughs> Yeah. Damn. Ooh. Right on. Yeah. Um. As we get to the news this week. Yes. Uh. If you are the type of person who feels like America is in chaos mm -hmm. and maybe you can't get legal weed where you live, we have a really great alternative for you. And this week, 4th of July week, use code weed and grub to get 40% off anything you want from Quinn. Mm -hmm. Q-W-I-N. Thank you, Quinn. I need weed now more than ever. Yep. Uh now more than ever and it is truly some great products whether it's a cookie whether it's a vape whether it's a cookie that you follow a vape chase with a vape yeah. <laughs> whatever it is weed and grub 40 percent off uh so worth it yep they've got all of these different flavors and different types of cannabinoids and it's an all cannabinoid brand so it's all sourced from hemp so it's legal to ship to all 50 states and they're fantastic they hooked us up with cookies and vapes and i've been really enjoying just like m small bites of cookies and then just going on a walk with archie and he does his whole king pee bit <laughs> and we feel like we own the world <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> um so go to myquin.com qwin um um, if you are angry at America, mm. well, support a small business like Quinn. That's and right. if you are angry that weed is not federally legal yet, well, support a small business like Quinn. Support all small businesses. Support everything except for, uh, no, support our country. Yeah, support our country. Support businesses that support women. Support businesses that are coming up from the ground roots, roots ground, ground grass roots. The grass is roots. Sp support roots. Support the Yay fucking grass. <laughs> yeah, if you like grass, support the roots. <laughs> You heard it here first. <laughs> Use code weed and grub at checkout for 40% off the week of July 4th uh, at myquin.com. M Y Q W I N.com. Yeah. What's their new story? So this let's week? get to the news. This is actually a really great story. We've got um, coming from Marijuana Moment. They're reporting about the California State Fair having the first ever state sanctioned uh, weed competition. Oh, cool. Yeah, this just happened. Um, I remember when it was announced and it was a big deal because all of the cannabis competitions were like you know kind of jockeying for position and like wh who's gonna get like first seat at this table to have the state sanctioned competition and i was interested to see how it shook out they did it really simply they just announced winners in best of california indoor outdoor and mixed light those were all of the um categories and it sounds like it just went great and people were really stoked about it the major winners were uh, companies that I don't actually know that much about. Essencia is one that I have heard of. Green Shock Farms and Mocha Humboldt um, were the big winners. And uh, it was pre uh, presented by Colas, who um, were, we met with in Sacramento. Yeah, we did. They're awesome. They're great. I, oh, there's some Colas here right now. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Kicks. So uh, congratulations to the first ever California State Fair winners of the, um, yeah, first ever state sanctioned Weed Awards. And I think that that is probably a model for competitions to come all around the country as more and more states go legal. I'm excited to go to like the first ever New York State Fair weed competition, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. It also makes me think of um, we've gotten into these debates before and it's one that feels like small to me it's not that important to me but a lot of people are like we need to stop using indica sativa hybrid we need yes. to we need to branch out from that even though that is a universal understanding it is no longer accurate so how do you feel about categories like indoor outdoor mixed light well, as a new type of category to achieve like um great weed under I think it's fantastic because those are actually distinct categories that, you know, and then each category, you're just judging the best of that growing. I think like judging on how the weed is grown is a much better de um, defining category than, yeah, indica, sativa, and hybrid is totally, I mean, it's meaningless really at this point. At this point it is. It's all hot yeah. dogs. It's just what, where do you Everything like Everything is a dogs? hybrid and like indica isn't necessarily a defining characteristic for something that is necessarily going to relax you. Like indica might make you have an energizing feeling, you know, just like, just like indica for some people is energizing. Sativas for some people are just anxiety inducing. It's like, yeah, we don't oh, know. Can you hand me that bag right there? Sure. Or no, on. can you hand me that right there? Yeah. It's a limited edition. Yeah. 
Yes, but actually the other one. Yeah, thank you. Um, this isn't an ad. This isn't paid for. This isn't anything. But I just want to shout out a THC Design for their Log Cabin Limited Drop. Hell yeah! It's yes. coming soon, and they hooked me up with a couple of them, and they are rocking. So for Fourth of July weekend, I just wanted to say thank you to THC Design for their Log Cabin pre roll. Uh, it's tasty, pine, earthy, citrus, sweet, maple, good density. It's a lemon OGKB and biker Kush. And a uh, limited edition from THC Design, which again just goes back to it's how it's grown, yep. not the because uh, it's all about the peonies. It's all about the peonies. I'm excited. By the time this comes out, I will have gone to my first uh, event at THC Design. I've never gone to check out their facility because they're you've been to a few of their speakeasies, right? Thanks to our guest today. Oh, holy cow! Whoa, what well, a cool tie-in. Let's do buds of the week. Okay, and then uh, let me. Okay, so I'll talk about this tie-in, yeah. Buds of the Week, and then the tie-in is tied. Perfect. Okay, let's double knot this bitch. <laughs> um, the first THC design party I ever got to go to was because of our guest this week, Lisa Curry, and it was Shavo, her, me, and Kelly, the producer of The Jim Jeffries Show, and that THC design party is how you and I got to be on Jim Jeffries' podcast. It's how Shavo and I got to be pals. It's how Lisa and I like met in the weed world and the comedy world. Well- fucking there that's it is awesome. THC design bringing it all together connecting yeah. cannabis with good people 100 percent. and that also ties into our interview with lisa today about um i think at the end of the interview how we talk about there's room for everyone and yeah. it's all about giving and getting abundance thinking abundance fucking thinking yeah well let's do buds of the week and then i'll keep gushing over lisa yeah do you want to go first or second for buds of the week um it's up to you <laughs> no it's up to you i'm asking you i would like to go second because <laughs> uh i think my bud might be a double bud okay so my butt of the week is Stephanie, a.k.a. Cakes. Uh, we haven't met in real life yet. I'm really excited to connect with her in person. We've just been chatting online a lot because she's a woman crushing in cannabis. And she DM'd me when that article about sexism came out. And she was like, thanks for just talking about some stuff that women face in weed. And like, yes. And I was like, OK, this is, you know, it's just great to hear from some people um, who are crushing it in weed, but also like you know, feeling the need to uh, talk openly about some of the issues we're all facing. So she's great. She's killing it in cannabis. She just dropped off a box of amazing gifts for me on my doorstep the other day, just at the right time when the world was just going crazy. And I was like, oh, this is perfect balm for my soul. So thank you, Stephanie. I'm so um, grateful to you for everything that you do. And I'm so glad to uh, just know you in the world. So she's my butt of the week. And oh, and follow her at Stephanie Cakes. And it's an underscore on either side of that. Underscore Stephanie Cakes underscore. Nice. Yeah. Great butt of the week. She's awesome. My butt of the week this week is Ed at Ed, not Fred. Uh, Ed is an awesome part of the Top Tree team who, if you've liked any of our TikToks, any of our reels, <laughs> that's all Ed. Yeah. That's all Ed. So, so funny. Thank you for the two million views on uh, our TikTok with um, the, the Custos. Custos. Thank you for blowing us up, growing our socials, listening to the pod, enjoying it, and then just like making these incredible TikToks and reels. So if you are also someone who is looking for a little bit of social media help, hit up at Ed Not Fred. And also, if you live in New York, Homeboy's got some dates coming up where he's performing at the Soho Playhouse, and then he's going to be in Europe. Follow at Ed Not Fred. Support the homie. He's supporting us, just like Mark, just like Top Tree Studio, Jonathan, Lane, Natasha. Come on. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. all family. It's all family. So uh, Ed is my butt of the week because he's uh, he does great work, and he's a really great guy. So funny. I love the way he pulls out little animated clips and everything to sort of support and underscore some of the crazy shit that you and I say. Yeah. He just makes it all funnier and it's like, it's just, it's a cool feeling. The one that uh, I dropped today on our channels, this will have come out a couple of weeks ago, but uh. most of the comments are, I'm dumber for listening to this. <laughs> yeah, totally. My and, brain just slid out my ear. Yeah. Great. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh. So should we get to our VIB, our very important bud? Yes. Lisa Curry. Oh, my God. What a fun time. Yeah. An incredibly talented comedian, um, an incredibly talented, giving and hustling person. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I just want to say thank you again for connecting us with Jim Jeffrey's show, Kelly, THC Design. Like, it's all a tight knit fam. And when that fam is climbing the mountain together, it feels really good. Yeah. She's such a generous, funny, warm spirit. Mm -hmm. Like, she just kind of radiates like really i mean she's so fucking funny and that light just like i don't know it was just I, i'm a little without words because it's just you don't encounter people like that often enough in the world i think fuck no i mean you know yeah we need it 
go see her live and then in August go see her open for Jim Jeffries in Vegas. Fuck yes. Treat yourself to a room at the Cosmo. Yeah. Give them $20 at the check-in line and then they'll upgrade your room. You you but you got to do it with your ID first, right? You yeah, just you give put them the 20 under with the your ID. ID. Yes. And then they'll upgrade your room and then you'll see Lisa perform mm-hmm. and you'll have a nice hot tub in your Cosmo Politan room and then uh, you can buy a bottle of champagne. <laughs> yep. And just get hammered. Yeah, and also there's free weed or free weed, um, legal weed in Nevada. Steal weed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. go steal some weed in Nevada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. I'm not correcting you on that. No. Nope. Um, okay. Without further ado, here's our interview with Lisa Curry. Mike, I know you love a good buzz. MJ, you really do know me. But if you're on the road doing comedy and you travel to a state where cannabis is still illegal, you might think there aren't a lot of options for you to bring along safely. True. But no way. I'm here to tell you that no matter where you are, you do have options with Quinn. That's right. Quinn is an alt-cannabinoid brand that is selling real THC products, everything from edibles to vapes, and they ship to all 50 states. So how do they ship to all 50 states? It's because their THC products are all extracted from hemp. It's amazing. All Quinn products are third-party tested, and they use only the cleanest ingredients to give you a quality high. Try their Super Blend Disposable Vapes. It's like live resin, but these vapes have a variety of major and minor cannabinoids, including THCO, Delta 8, CBG, and CBN. And they're legal in all 50 states because they're derived from hemp. You can use our coupon code to get a special discount for the week of July 4th. Get 40% off. 40% off? How do I do that? Well, you go to myquinn, that's M-Y-Q-W-I-N.com and use promo code weed and grub to get 40% off all week of July 4th. Weed and grub. Okay, so what I was going to say, Lisa Curry, was that I talk about you an uncomfortable amount, not on the podcast, but outside oh, the that's podcast. Really nice. I, I like, is it weird to say I like think about you because I <laughs> think you're cool? <laughs> no, that's not weird. I do that with people all the time. Yeah, you're just rad and you work so hard, and I've absolutely like stolen hustle from you. I love that. That makes me so happy. You've like created so many opportunities for yourself and then delivered on them. (laughs) And I'm just like, anyway, I talk about you a lot. So thanks for being on the pod. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. That's so flattering. That makes me want to cry a little bit. I like this phrase stolen hustle a lot. Because he really yeah. does. I mean, I because I spend so much time with Mike, I've heard a ton about you. So I feel like... Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's just very cool to sit and get to hang out with you on the pod now. And Yeah. I think yeah. it's... Um, well, I'm addicted to work. So I don't know if that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I, do, I have been told a thousand times, like, agents and managers are like, ooh, yeah, you don't... We need this or you're not enough of this or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I don't agree with that. So I'm just going to go find work for myself. <laughs> fuck you yeah well can i just give a quick resume so you don't have to talk about yeah, yourself absolutely. too much absolutely unless you this. like to talk no, about please yourself. go for okay. it <laughs> um great stand-up comedian oh thank you two albums one album one album i'm working on my second one we're gonna understand one because mm-hmm. you recorded in london yeah your first I recorded one recorded my first one in london Whoa. and uh jim jeffrey's writer yeah for the jim jeffrey mm-hmm. show which led to you being a uh his opener yeah which I have a lot of private jet questions that we'll get to eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've also booked your own tours mm-hmm. all over America. Mm-hmm. And the world, Europe. right? Europe. Yeah. yeah. You've toured the fucking world yeah. on your own hustle. Uh-huh. And uh, and you grew up in Arkansas? Indiana. Indiana, thing. Arkansas. Mm-hmm. They're all fucking square. <laughs> um, and you have a great dog. I do. I love her so much. She's the best. Am I missing anything? I think that. Oh, an Olympian mm-hmm. writer. You wrote yeah. a book about being an Olympian. <laughs> that was the other one. Yeah. 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 Please check out my uh, forthcoming book, uh, Life at 60 by Lisa Curry. <laughs> please set this up for our listeners because I just learned about this and it's amazing. So wait, so tell the, what I told you. Yes. So um, my name on Instagram where you should fo- hit that follow button uh, is Olympian Lisa Curry. And the reason is there's an Olympic gold medalist in Australia named Lisa Curry. And she took our name. So I was like, well, fuck you. I'm taking Olympian. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple months ago, I fired my manager because he just uh, wasn't with it. Um, and then a couple weeks ago, he wrote me an email asking if I had written a book. <laughs> if I had written a book. Uh, folks... The other Lisa Curry wrote a memoir called My Life at 60, A Tale of Life, Love, and Loss, or something that's subtitled something like that. She's on the cover. It's not. (laughs) Your manager met you, right? Yeah. We've we've had a meal together a couple Mm -hmm. of times. Mm -hmm. 
We actually, I met him working on a show together. So he knows I'm not near 60. Mm -hmm. He he knows this. Uh, (laughs) He was in a room with me every day for like a month. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe he had a stroke? Perhaps. (laughs) Like, <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. He also, I mean, there was, he, I, I felt he had dropped the ball on a few other things without, um, you know, I don't want to drag him, but, right. but, uh, I was like, if I'm managing myself much better. <laughs> 100%. What was her, what was her gold medal sport? Swimming, which I was a swimmer, which is weird. We're, and we're the same height. We're both blonde. She does have piercing blue eyes. Like they look, they look fake. Um, and yours are green? Yeah, hazel? mine are green. Mm-hmm. I claim green. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can um, see the mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. I mean, so we're both ripped to shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've had friends like um, uh, when I was more active on Facebook, when I was more of a boomer than I am now, uh, <laughs> I had friends tag me in articles about her and they were like, w- one of them was she was dating an Elvis impersonator. Yeah, I don't know if she still is. And one of my friends was like, congrats. Like, sincerely. <laughs> they weren't fucking with me. And I was like, D- are you, what? No offense to <laughs> your life and all the things I just rattled off, but her life sounds awesome. Like, she sounds like she has an awesome life. It does, awesome sound, life. Awesome. It does I would, sound awesome. I would watch your new stand-up album called mm-hmm. My Life as Olympian <laughs> Elvis Impersonating Dater with Piercing Blue Eyes Lisa Curry. <laughs> I would absolutely watch that show. I tried to get her on my Sirius XM show. I, I reached out to her through like her contact form on her website. And then her PR person wrote back and they're like, oh, because I was like, I'd used the book as an excuse. And I was like, hey, I'm Lisa Curry and she's Lisa Curry. I'd love to have her on to promote her book. And her PR person was like, oh, yeah, it's not being released in the US. So, but thanks. And I'm like, yeah, no, I don't actually care about the book. Right. I know. I, I'm sorry you get the, that you missed the context yeah. of the email. <laughs> give two fucks. Yeah. Why would I open the email? I'm Lisa Curry and she's Lisa Curry. Obviously, I'm unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, please. Anyway, I'm very upset. What's the name of your Sirius XM show? Long Story Long. It airs uh, Thursdays on She's So Funny Channel 771. Hell yeah. yeah. So check that out. Is this a weird, should I be plugging right in the middle? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, like, I don't like the whole Guys. plug of the Plugs show. up top. Mm-hmm. Plugs up top. Always. Yeah. 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 Yep. If you're going to plug, plug it up. That's yeah, it's right. a fun show. And I had Mike on and he was uh, one of my favorite guests. That was so, we laughed so hard. Yeah, we did. The whole time. I should have you on again. Honestly. I'd love to. Well, I think like, again, to your, to my stolen hustle from you, you mm-hmm. were like, I just got this serious XM show um i'd love for you to be on it and i was like great let's do it And it was in the middle of the pandemic Mm -hmm. and you had set up your closet Mm -hmm. like a recording studio because you were like nothing is going to stop me from (laughs) my dreams and goals and i was like man (laughs) thank you i needed i needed to see somebody i needed contact i needed to not feel crazy and then i saw you and you're like oh yeah i got a full slate like i'm I'm so busy (laughs) Did you, is that how you weathered the pandemic? Did you really just like stay on the Kind of. I mean, like I did give myself a bit of a break uh, insofar as I left LA for seven months and I went and I lived with my cousin and her family on their homestead in Bloomington, Indiana. And it was so nice. Like I gave myself a lot of downtime um, and I fucked off a lot, but I was like, I still needed kind of, I guess, guideposts. And I was like, okay, well, I have uh the podcast going so that felt like so i needed some things so i didn't feel like uh i had nothing in my life because because i've centered my life around work (laughs) so i'm like you know i took a lot of time for family but also needed some creative outlets and now that things are opening back up and you're back like out on Mm -hmm. the road and everything how are you feeling about that balance are you feeling I mean, I know just like the stresses. I feel like I really needed the, to to be unplugged from yeah. L.A. for a while uh, because now I have more of a work-life balance than I had before. I'm also not – there's something about working with Jim. I don't feel the panic I felt before of like, what if things don't happen for me? Because I'm like, okay, well, that happened. And that's something I never thought would happen because I'm not passed at the comedy store and – that seems to be like the path for a lot of people is like get past at the store, suck everyone's ass there, mm-hmm. and then, you know, start opening for a big comic that way. And I, so I just kind of resigned myself to that never happening. Um, 
And then when it did, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess anything can happen. Right. I mean, not that that was like when I say like anything can happen, not like I was abducted by aliens or something, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's definitely Although a you big would put deal. that on your resume. Yeah. Like you're so cutthroat. You would be like, that's going under also special abducted skills. By aliens. A hundred percent. We were just making you think like of, w- with everything that's happening in the fucking world today. And like, I'm so angry and upset and stressed uh-huh. out all the time because it's like shit yeah. just happening politically. Uh-huh. I just wrote to myself. I was like, you know, I don't actually have to do what they say. Nothing. We don't have to do what they say, right? Uh-huh. And you can actually just do whatever you want. Yeah. And that's including how... laws, by the way. Right. I'm fucking done. Yeah. You think I'm following laws now? You think I'm following them? I've <laughs> been breaking laws my whole goddamn life. Whole life. Yep. I mean, granted, uh, yes, anyone listening or watching, I understand I'm like a white lady living in California. <laughs> um, but I... Listen, I'm ready to commit arson. I don't I if I could find a way around if I could find a workaround for the prison thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True story, just hired a personal trainer cuz I was like I have to get my body into fighting uh-huh. shape. Oh, I'm ready to beat somebody's <laughs> ass. I've been in fights a lot of times before. Yeah, physical fights? Like, yeah, and I'm like I really I I was a very very angry teenager. Like I yeah, this now here's where I sound like I'm making shit up, but I literally have had rage blackouts, which if you look at it's a thing, apparently it's pretty common with teenagers because you just have so many hormones well, and yeah. like if you get angry enough, you will black out. Uh, <laughs> and I did. And I kind of like I you know, I curbed that behavior as an adult. I was like, I can't just be like breaking things, but I I miss it. Yeah. Some real she hulk shit. I really like I I've punched out windows before and it there's nothing more exhilarating. Like I haven't found anything that matches breaking something you're not supposed to be breaking. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I have uh, friends of mine made an uh, installation in a truck called the smash truck where you would just mm-hmm. get to go in with a sledgehammer oh, and yeah. swing it and break shit. And uh-huh. it was, yeah, the most satisfying. And oh, I love I, that. I think everyone should have their own smash truck. You can't, you fucking there's so many people that are like i'm just so gentle i would never and i'm like you need to get it out because otherwise you're gonna fucking kill someone yeah you have to let it out right some of the there's sunniest no people who are, yeah. who are like just like that kind of demeanor you uh-huh. know you know they're the ones who are gonna and snap yeah and it's terrifying <laughs> when you meet somebody that doesn't doesn't admit to their like violent fantasy <laughs> they're just and you could see them like one of my friends her boyfriend is always like i'm such a nice guy and you could just see him <laughs> boiling below the surface and it's like oh he's gonna pop off any day now and yeah. it's not gonna be cool yeah i feel like that's something that people don't really acknowledge about the world of weed is that mm-hmm. a lot of people smoke weed because they're so mad it's not so like they're a mad. super chill bunch of people. Yeah. People who smoke a lot of weed are generally doing it because they need it so they don't have rage blackouts. Yeah. Well, I told you guys before we were recording, I, I microdosed mushrooms this morning because I saw another shit garbage SCOTUS uh, ruling. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm so angry and I need to be able to function today. And because mm-hmm. what happens for me, and I don't know about you guys, but when I get really angry, it's just like a lot of loud noise in my brain. I know that now now I sound like I have schizophrenic and I promise I'm not, <laughs> but it's just like, like I can't even read because I'm, my brain is in a loop of like the, this fucking thing, like just mm-hmm. going over and over. And I'm like, or like this morning I was listening to a podcast and I had to keep rewinding and keep rewinding the same. Cause I wasn't even hearing it. Cause I was so mad. And I'm like, okay, I need to find a way to calm down. And this is after I had, worked out by the way so i was like i had gotten a lot of energy out do th- does the microdosing mushrooms for you clear that space for you to like to it helps you f- what does it, it do just for you? calms me down mm-hmm. just like a but in a way where i don't really even notice it like weed calms me down but also puts me to sleep and also makes me completely incapacitated uh it takes very little where and i only recently started microdosing mushrooms and I, I mean like recently as in last week oh wow because i just happen to have a bunch of little like five milligram pills and so i'm like let me try one of these and nice. i'm like oh this is nice how did you just happen to have a bunch of pills oh, small build them in from canada <laughs> yeah <laughs> somebody <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody gave me a little package of them because they're legal there and i just i just transferred it into another little bag 
And uh, if anybody wants any tips, uh, don't put it in your luggage because that's too dangerous. I put it in a pack of gum Mm -hmm. because then I thought, well, if I'm going through TSA and I see dogs, I'll just throw out a pack of gum. Smart. And they won't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was that was it. It was only like 20 pills. I mean, I'm not like taking a haul across. That's too scary. Right. And I think I feel like if you got apprehended by the TSA with mushroom pills, they wouldn't even know what they were looking at. You could be like, it's a supplement for it's an herbal supplement, right? Yeah. Although I do think for that to be believable, they'd have to be in some kind of container and not like in the back away. of gum. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're like, well, then why are you hiding it? And I'm like, I don't want anyone to know I have IBS. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ashamed. Uh, I don't have IBS unless that's what's going on with me after I have coffee in the morning. I don't, who can tell? Who knows? I might be allergic to coffee. <laughs> but you heard it here first. She's not schizophrenic and, and she, she doesn't, doesn't have IBS. <laughs> We're just here to cover medical conditions I don't have. <laughs> well, my poison oaks all cleared up, so hey. I'm feeling much better. Wait, you had poison oaks? So bad. God damn, was that the most miserable thing you've ever had? I had to go to the hospital for it. It was <gasps> real bad. Oh god. Yeah, my body was yes. Yeah, Where did you get it? Um on my body or like in the world? No, in the world. Oh. Like <laughs> <laughs> on my body was my whole left leg in the world Yikes. i was like i think elysian park what echo park elysian park i thought for sure you were going to be like deep in the woods of kentucky <laughs> no <laughs> it, was, it was somewhere in la i don't know why i just like assume i don't know i just think that you know like where you see poison oak is also where you see matthews and bears water mullets like <laughs> i just assume that that all kind of goes together yeah no it's it's here in la along with the urban wildlife yeah definitely that's not good yeah it sucked it was crazy to see yeah i know it was i made mike look at it it was gross it was wild (laughs) what that i mean that must have fucking driven you out of your mind yeah it was really weird because the way have you ever had poison oak no it's it's like i don't know why you said it like that (laughs) no i'm caught it's crazy because i think you're like the first time you encounter it it, you Mm -hmm. don't necessarily react but then Something about the way it operates with your system is the next time you get it, you're basically sort of allergic to it. And then the rash. Excuse me? Yeah. I Why don't would know. your body work like that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I need like... to look more into it because this is how it was explained to me by a dermatologist. So maybe he was just lying to me. I'm allegedly immune to poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac, which n- n- I've had none of them. Mm-hmm. And there was that shit all over my grandparents' property. And like we lived next to woods and it was all over in the woods. The the theory, my mom told me that she heard if you breastfeed, your your kids are either can can develop an immunity or are less susceptible to it. Um, and I was breastfed and I didn't ha- never got it by Whoa. some miracle. I don't I should have had it because I was like rolling around in the woods my whole life. I thought I was I immune this way. Clearly I'm not. But I, my mother only breastfed me until I was six months old. So, oh, that's it. I mean, I wasn't like. On the tip till six. Be mad or at your mom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Fuck you, mom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if there's any validity to that. So if anybody like wants to write me an angry email, I don't. I am a doctor. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that I, there's got to be something to that. Has to be. I feel like because um, I'm su- super allergic mm-hmm. to it. Like my skin is. Uh, I think, yeah, super like you allergy. just looked at my poison oak and you felt yeah, and it, itchy. yeah, I was like, ah, like it's crazy. <laughs> and so I wonder if I was. Does it pass person not. to person? Uh, you can actually transfer it. Like you can. I think what might have happened God. actually is that my dog brushed up against <gasps> the poison oak and then brushed oh. up against me. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. Yep, I don't know either. What's your dog's name? Lula. Luna. 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 Yeah. We met recently, and uh-huh. I got yeah. yelled at. And then was so sweet. Luna yeah. yelled at you. Luna yeah. yelled at me, and then um, was the sweetest in the world, and like brought him, brought me toys. Yeah, and it was very cool. And then Gart, while Lisa and I were talking about some tour stuff, um, guarded us from anyone who might have been on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. That's- Fuck anyone walking past my place. <laughs> <laughs> She's cool. getting a little bit better with it because I'm like, you can't. We don't need you yelling at everyone. It's okay. You did say that. You were yeah. like, you're not a cop. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very sweet. Yeah. Oh, I, I have m- more questions about physical conditions. Oh, yes. Okay. When you eat asparagus, mm-hmm. do you experience the pee situation? I don't I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it's not. 
I, I don't know because whenever I've had asparagus, it's with so many other things. <laughs> okay. And I shit so many times during the day that I don't know if I would notice a difference in my pee smell because there's just so much shit smell in my life. <laughs> okay. Masking the pee smell. It's, yeah. a, it's the odds of me even smelling my pee, unless it's like first thing in the morning when it's just pee. It, that's that's pretty much the only time I catch a whiff. Okay. The rest of the day, I'm shitting a lot. <laughs> I... Um, last night I ate some um, Don't vegan have nachos from Doobies, <laughs> and I had one of the best f- smelling farts I've ever had in my oh. life. It smelled so good. I was like, damn, dude, you need more vegan mole nachos in your life, because that I bet people that's would hilarious. think, like, oh, that's quite nice. Did you, like, Dutch oven yourself and enjoy it Enjoy it a little bit? Uh, I, I Next time I will capture, <laughs> for sure. If you could put it in a jar. Yeah, you could be like that TikTok girl yeah. who she made, like, a million dollars farting right. in jars. And then she got sick from it or yeah, something? Yeah, she had to go to the hospital. <laughs> Because she was eating so much fiber in order to produce farts to put in jars that she actually fucked herself up. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it's worth a million dollars, so It really is. Of course. Because then you can afford health care to go to the hospital. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Are you allergic to anything? Um, I recently found out I'm allergic to soy. Whoa. And by re- uh, but recently, you're a health like freak, a Lisa. Years. I know. Um, I... Well, I was trying to transition away from meat and I was eating a lot of tofu and I had real bad cystic acne, like extremely painful. Um, and then I was in Indonesia for a couple of weeks and didn't have any tofu and it all cleared up 100%. And I'm like, now I notice like if I eat something and it has soy in it, I'll notice because I'll break out the next day and I'm like, fuck this. I mean, it's I'll still have sushi and like a little bit of soy sauce. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah can't have it which sucks because i'm like well i mean i do like the taste of meat but i was like trying to eat less of it and i'm like well it's not really much of an option now what are your feelings on meat alternatives like the impossible burger i beyond fucking beef? love the impossible burger but i think it's i think the beyond burger i can't have because it has soy in it but um i think it's delicious it's so good although i, I just i really do love meat though i was just i think i Maybe it was on Reggie Watts's Instagram. There's somewhere where I saw recently that they are growing meat without animal. Like they're grow. Do you know about this? What no. lab grown meat? Oh, that's, that's like weird. they're growing it from cultures that just exist in the laboratory without a sentient. Without and like it's yeah. I don't know anything more about it. So I love now that. I'm just saying a bunch of words. But sign um, me up, please. Yeah, yeah. Growing meat in labs. I, mean, I don't know. I just there's something about I mean you know it's gross you well you guys like food yeah <laughs> it's the, the cooking it and the whole ritual and a tradition and like spicing something and like you know adding vegetables to the meal it's like it's just all of that all of the the act of it together is so soothing and satisfying and good and it feels like like making a big meal for people feels so good and then I'm like you can't you don't get this i'm sorry you just don't get the same effect when you're like a uh, block of tofu anyone? <laughs> <laughs> you're cracking open petri dishes and putting them on the <laughs> counter for yeah. apps yeah. yeah it it doesn't i it just doesn't have the same pizzazz i guess it sounds like you, you love know? cooking i do really love cooking i don't do it i don't do like big meals much although i was going to mention well to both of you uh, mike i because i know you really love to cook i got when i was in alaska when i did those gigs uh the this local comic his mom sent me home with a case full of fish and we so my roommates and i used to do fish dinner once a month where we would like eat halibut or salmon or whatever because i got like five hundred dollars of it for free (laughs) Nice. Whoa. And I still have some halibut left, but my roommates are mostly gone over the next couple months. And I'm like, I got to get through this before it's like freezer burnt or whatever. So, I mean, if you want to come over and fucking my some fish downstairs dish? neighbor. Yeah. My downstairs neighbor has a grill. We could grill it up. Ooh, you know? Yeah. I've learned a lot of great fish dishes from Mary Jane. Do you know she oh. worked on Alaskan fishing boat? I did not know that. Wait, did you work on one of those shows, Deadly's uh, Catch? Or? No, I oh. I milked it for all it was worth, though, because I actually had like the sort of one of the most 
uh, it wasn't cushy because uh-huh. it was definitely like working hard on a boat, uh-huh. but it was in Southeast Alaska in the salmon trolling Ooh. fishery, which is like hook and line, no bycatch, <gasps> really. And all of the boats that are catching the salmon are like little one and two person operations. So that it's not like high seas, you know, big boat stuff at all. That it's very, it's like so around cool. the islands. Wait, are you from there? I'm from Newfoundland in Canada, oh, okay. but um, my sister was a fisheries biologist and she got me a job on this salmon what? boat and I did it for four years and it was awesome. And when I was doing it, it was right when the like the perfect storm had just come out and deadliest catch and all this stuff. And my friends were like, oh my God, that's so badass. And I was like literally watching, you know, humpback whales and like just having the most oh, sort of God, like bucolic time. So it was really, it was You guys should come over and we, we can have a fish dinner. Uh, let's do fish. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to name a couple of new recipes I've learned from Mary Jane. Tell me if you're excited by them. Yeah. Chipino. Do you know what that is? Wait, that's the pasta with the clams and stuff? It's like a soupy situation, which I know we've gotten in a oh, lot of soup. fights about. Yeah. But this is like a s- fishy <laughs> soup. It's like, yeah, it's like a fish stew. Um, stew. Like a, I like a it, lot but of it really, that's one of those things that really has to be done well. Yes. Yes. Because if it's not, it just is like, oh, this is this is all the old fish you had. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. It is a it's disgusting. Dump. This was this was on clearance. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A can of tuna. Yeah. Some sardines. Yeah. Uh, old mussels. I do love old. sardines though. Yeah. I love my dad. I didn't know that you're supposed to put them on crackers and shit. Because my dad and I would just eat them straight out of the can. Oh, yum. Just like sit down and watch Zorro. <laughs> I can eat sardines. <laughs> I am an old man. And one time I brought them in like third grade, I brought them to school lunch and everyone left my lunch table. They were like, I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but it's not right. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, between the two of you, your school lunches sound horrendous. Oh, my mom used to send me to school with tongue sandwiches. Mm-mm. No. No. No, I was not popular. <laughs> Canceled you can't even trade for anything. That's no. so crazy. It's so disappointing Couldn't that change. you can get canceled for like, you know, hate speech and not sending your child to school <laughs> with a tongue sandwich. That's cancelable, I think. Way more. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, are you saying you should get canceled for tongue sandwiches? Yeah. Okay, then yeah, I'm yeah. on board. Yeah, okay. yeah. I just want to be on the right side of Sorry things. Sorry to your mom. But... It's a cruel thing to do to like a seven-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. And then I got bullied by Sue Ann Tilly, who made me carry your lunchbox because, you know. Sue? Fuck yourself. Yep. Sue Ann. Just, yep. I'll box her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I know you. <laughs> I love this. Um, have you ever heard of something called jade dumplings? I have not. Ooh. Uh, I was just going through a bunch of old cooking photos because mm-hmm. I got interviewed for a show that I'm never going to get on. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was nice to be interviewed for it. Uh, and uh, I saw a picture of when we made jade dumplings together mm-hmm. from fucking scratch, and I can't remember the recipe, so please interrupt, but they are great fish dumplings. Yeah, oh. it's just it's the best salmon you can find with, um, super simple, a little sesame oil, um, chopped up uh, scallions, salt, pepper, and um, just wrapped up in a little ge- like gyoza wrapper, and then you can either pan fry them or boil them, and then you serve them with a little ponzu sauce. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Mm-hmm. And eat like a hundred of them while like sitting down, eat them yeah. like popcorn. Yeah, Oof. so good. Yeah. Oh, I have a question for you, you because yes. we've gone on the road twice, and um, your snack game is really <laughs> impressive, whether it's on the road or on tour. So how do you yeah. how do you actually eat healthy when you're driving from city to city or flying? <sighs> you got to plan that. And being in hotels, yeah. Yeah, I. you know what? Well, now that I'm, t- one, I live on Quest Bars. I just ha- had one in the car on the way here. I don't know what I that is. I actually really like them. Uh, they're protein bars that are like high in protein, no sugar. Uh, n- it's just like, it's, it's the best thing for like, if you need a lot of protein bars, quote unquote, protein bars are like basically a Snickers bar because there's so much sugar in it or it's like c- coated in caramel or whatever. Yeah. Kind bars or candy bars. Um, so I do a lot of those, a lot of nuts. I used to do beef jerky, but I don't like how it gets stuck in my teeth. Mm-hmm. I feel um, that. Although I'm really big on I'm, they're not remotely healthy, but Cheez-Its. I fucking love Cheez-Its. I can't Ugh. do a car trip without Cheez-Its. We just learned uh, that Cheez-Its are made in an oven the size of a football field. They're oh, actually what? baked by being put into an oven at the start, and then the length of time that they travel is how long it takes them to, like, they're, it's a slow bake. Ooh. So they just move really slowly through this 100-yard long oven. There, I got hooked on them in third grade. My teacher would bring them in uh, whenever we would do standardized testing. That she brought in Cheez Its for us to snack on, and I just loved that teacher so much. And I 
I'm a good test taker. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just like awesome. so many. I'm like, I'm the filling hustle. out these bubbles and I'm fucking breaking records here. I'm so smart. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, it's a really positive memory. Um, That's awesome. And I like love, love, love Cheez-Its. What, what do you, yeah. How do you, how do you deal with like hotel situations and hotels? And I all do. That? Well, if I, it, de- it depends on my staying. So situ- when I was in the UK, um because i was staying at a friend's house i like port i bring all my own breakfast which in the morning i have i did this uh stacia patwell is a fucking magician and i did her like workout program last year i started that last summer it's incredible she runs this uh workout program called school of thought and it's it's like 45 to 55 minute videos but it's thought t-h-o-t right t-h-o-t yeah and you and you do it all at home so that i've been doing on the road that's fucking real easy to do in a hotel room or when i'm staying with somebody or whatever is it like booty popping and shit no is that why it's really T-H-O-T? Intense. oh okay. no it's t-h-o-t because like we just get super ripped and hot <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> school of thought yeah, yeah. stacia's yeah. body is ridiculous she also does a lot of like weightlifting and other stuff um but so like that's really easy to implement and then um uh, she just taught us a lot like she teaches you when you do her program she teaches you about macros and like tracking that because i was like I've always eaten healthy, but I didn't know how you're supposed to balance like protein with car- like Whoa. living in L.A. I thought you're supposed to do no fucking carbs ever. Nothing but white. Her, yeah. But her thing is like lots of carbs, but it's like complex carbs, like mm-hmm. carbs you're supposed to have. So it's like um, anyway. So for breakfast every morning, I have oatmeal and uh, a protein shake, which is delicious. Like I don't it's just a chocolate protein shake. So then when I go on the road, if I have if I'm going to have access to a kitchen or hot water or microwave or whatever, I bring like I portion out all my little oatmeals and I put those in Ziploc bags. And then I bring like my blender bottle and like uh, protein and whatever for shakes. Yeah. But then kind of lunch and dinner, I just eat healthy because I'm like, I'm not going to bring all my fucking food. I'm not going to bring a whole kitchenette or whatever. But, you like, know, damn, that's such a smart way to yeah, go. Yeah. This sounds very appealing to me. It also like if then if I'm like having like a healthy breakfast and I have like, you know, a quest bar later, if I'm hungry and I need a snack, then, you know, if I'm on the road with Jim and we order dinner, I'm like, well, I can pick out. I'm going to have the steak and potatoes with butter and whatever, because I'm like, well, the rest of my day has been super healthy. So, yeah, I'm going to allow myself that. What about pre-show when you're when you're doing a show? Do you eat? before a show like green room snacks show. i used to not like when i first started i couldn't yeah and now i'm like i'll have thanksgiving dinner before i don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> ivs be damned yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i can't do it i can't eat before a show oh for see, hours we, before yeah you kind of want to be like Whoa. light and clean right when you get on stage yeah yeah but sometimes it 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 has done more harm than good when I can't think straight, I'm just up there hungry. being angry. Yeah, yeah truly. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll have like one whiskey before and I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I have like oh, empty. Yeah. yeah. See, we always, the first couple of gigs with Jim, I didn't eat until afterwards, but we usually have, we're, we're in the habit now of like on this tour, it's, or this tour, with this new touring company, all the shows are at seven. And so we'll get to the theater at six and dinner is there ready for us. And I'm like, if we hold for time, if we hold to like, 7 15 7 30 and then i do my set and like by the time i would get to dinner it'd be eight i'm like i'm not gonna leave my food sitting there for two hours yeah you know i some security guard's gonna eat it (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. what kind of um venues are you playing like what size they're all theaters baby yeah they're so nice it's like two thousand to three thousand seat theaters holy shit um was this the first time in your career that you were playing to houses that big I did one other spot, um, a friend of mine, again, with like the hustle thing, my friend Jeff Houghton, who was, he was just in LA this week, he lives in Springfield, Missouri, and he always wanted to have his own late night show. So he's like, well, I'm just going to do it because he has like a wife and kids and all his family's there. He's like, I'm not going to realistically live in LA or New York. So he started doing this weekly late night show and then it grew and grew and grew and until the point that he was doing it at this theater, the Galois Theater in Springfield. And it's like a 2000 seat theater. Wow. And he would have it filmed and like it ran. I don't know if it still is, but it ran on like um, like 
local Fox stations. Like he sold it to a bunch of TV stations, not just local, but I think like 15 or so. Um, not local to Springfield, but like local, meaning like it wasn't on national Fox or anything. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I did, he in, invited me out to be a guest on the show and to perform on the show. So I did like a late night set for like 1500 people or whatever there which and was that was so your fun. tape for a while right that was my tape for a while and his show has won four emmys they're wow. not yeah fucking awesome it just and this is just it's like just do your fucking thing wherever you are you know do you uh, like how do you how does a venue size or crowd size affect what you do like are you still just playing to the people that you can see or do you have to sort of like Oh, I try to play to, I try to play to everyone. I'm, I'm really cognizant after like watching other people because I'm always trying to learn and I'm, so I'm watching what everyone else does. I try to like play up to the balcony a little bit too, or at least like look up to them because I'm like, I, you know, they're probably not there because they had $500 for a ticket and couldn't, and didn't feel like it, you know, Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Um, uh, I, my material's different only in that it's different with Jim where I'm not if I'm doing my own gigs I'm gonna go way off topic I'm gonna fuck around a lot I'm gonna try new stuff or when I'm with Jim I'm like I, you know I'll throw out something that I think of in the moment if it's just like a sidebar or punchline or whatever but not I'm not going way off topic I'm not trying new stuff I'm like it's not because I feel like it's it's my set, but it's not my show. So it's not my place to like fuck around. I'm like, I just have to, I'm just here to set this up. That's all. And you do. Yeah. Fuck I yeah. think I do. I hope I do. You, I bet you do. Come on. Man. <laughs> we know you do. Yeah. We'll see. Uh- <laughs> that actually leads me to something. Uh, I wanted to um, blow, like suck your ass a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> like the comedy store. Uh, because there's, I'm I'm gonna be wedging a bunch of stuff in here, but oh, yeah. I hope it Please makes do. sense. Mm-hmm. There's a direct parallel between the stand-up comedy scene and the cannabis scene. And Ooh. one thing that I've really admired about you in the stand-up scene that again I have stolen from you is the idea of there's a right way to ask for and go for what you want mm-hmm. and ask other people for mm-hmm. help along the way uh-huh. while also thinking of other people for opportunities that might not oh, be right that. for you uh-huh. to say like you know i did this or maybe uh-huh. this wasn't for me but give it a go if you want like you sent me that thing for um was it abu dhabi uh no oh, uh, wait for dubai dubai, dubai gigs? Yeah. yeah and you were like yo i did this i don't know if you're you even told me straight up you're like you do a lot of shit about weed and drugs they're probably not gonna fuck with you but here's the information if you have something I was yeah like, thank you and i didn't yeah. submit because i don't think i'm right but there's like these direct parallels between how you approach comedy and getting what you want and asking for uh-huh. what you want while also giving a lot of opportunity to other people that I, I wish think, the yeah. weed game had more of. Mm-hmm. I do think it's really important to give to other people. I mean, not like in a hokey way, not like, not even like karma or like it all comes back to you or whatever. It's just like, I think it helps the more you share information with other people and the more you try to help them get opportunities, I think it helps curb your own sense of like uh, scarcity. Because you're like, oh, there is enough for everyone. And and here you go. Like I, I was teaching this packet writing class for a little while. And whenever I would teach the class, if within the course of the class I got packet information, I would share it with the students. And one of the students wrote me a couple like a couple months after. And she's like, oh, by the way, that I interviewed for that job. I didn't get to round two, but she interviewed for it. And I was like, fuck yeah, but the the thing is, she, I think the misnomer in entertainment is like, I think there's a tendency to think like, oh, she interviewed for it, therefore she took my interview spot. And it's like, no, no, if I was a better candidate for her for that particular job, I would have interviewed for it and she wouldn't have. Yep. She didn't, Yeah. you know, or or if I was a good candidate for that job, I would have also interviewed for it. It's like, she didn't take my spot. She took a spot I wasn't going to get anyway yeah you know i really do wish people would have that mindset especially in in the weed world because like currently i just wrote a piece recently about sexism in the cannabis industry Uh and the blowback was from a lot of dudes who were like you know (laughs) of course they were like shut up you dumb you know get out of here we don't want you anyway we're not sexist you fucking bitch (laughs) exactly (laughs) sexism is a myth cunt and uh uh but there's the, there is this funny sort of 
uh, there's a there's a panic happening in cannabis right now because it is going corporate. It mm-hmm. is going mainstream. There is a move to legalize it federally, and then the corporations will show up and they will take it. Mm-hmm. So there is that feeling of sort of needing to hang on to it. But I think that the the attitude is coming from a place of terror, obviously, mm-hmm. and that if they could let go of that fear and say, well, let me f- see that there is enough for all of us, have some sort of abundance around the concept of the fact that it's not going anywhere, yeah. we can all benefit from it if we work together. It would be yeah. a nice shift. That would be nice. It is nice. And also, like, you know, I find that there there's one person in particular I think of a lot because I used to have a lot of anger towards them and now I just feel sorry for them where – uh this comic operates from a place of fear mm. all the time and will not like not only won't share information but is also backstabby and like secretive and th- they'll ask other people for information and now you know over the years that person has kind of been pushed out more and more from people's circles because it's like I'll share shit with Mike and then he'll share shit back with me. And that's just, that's how I am with my friends. And I'm like, I want us to all come up. Like I want to, I don't want to be everybody to be dependent on me having a fucking pool house. Right. Like I need you to have a pool house so I don't have to pay a gardener. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Like, Yeah. Like I want us all to win, but I feel like if you're not on board with that, eventually people stop fucking with you and then you're truly on your own and you look stupid. So it's like, yeah, I don't want that. And you're lonely and sad and you're lonely and sad and your bits (laughs) suck. You do get (laughs) less funny. You get, you get less funny when you're lonely and sad. I don't think it serves you as well as like succeeding and being proud. Of course. Yeah. And it's like, you know like if i see you go up somewhere mike and i think of a tag for you i'm gonna tell you that Mm -hmm. person i'm like i'm not interested in their success like i don't wish them any harm but i'm also like i'm not even watching your set i don't fucking care Mm -hmm. because fuck off yep and there's like no harm in that either honestly yeah the the like oh no you all you do is take yeah fuck off you definitely don't have to be nice to those people i've learned but it took me a really long ass time to learn that i don't have to be nice to people who are that's the thing assholes there's there is also like (laughs) there is like a weird toxic positivity thing too where people are like well you know people that are the hardest to love need love the most and so you should share with them more and i'm like i'm not giving them my time (laughs) i'm sorry i'm not fucking buddha or whatever i don't i'm not pretending to be i'm filled with rage Mm -hmm. the fact that i'm neutral with somebody who stabbed me in the back is i think commendable (laughs) (laughs) definitely 100 percent. highly commendable yeah Yeah. what about asking for what you want has that always come easy to you is there a technique is like because i've I've struggled with it because yeah. I think like, oh, I'm just going to be so good that everyone's going to come to me and like want my <laughs> attention and all. And it's not the fucking case. It's I just think, not. I think even if you are great people, people, two things can happen. Um, one, people feel like, you know, we're all presenting as though we're killing it so hard, which, you know, you and I are crushing. crushing. <laughs> we do have great momentum yep. right now. Yeah, I was just talking with Mary Jane about it. Like it's very to, hard yeah. to create momentum yeah. in any business. And when you and this is the longest my momentum has carried before yeah. the whenever the dip happens. Yeah. You know? And it, I think sometimes people don't reach out because they think, oh, they're doing fine or they're too busy or whatever. Or people get weirdly nervous. Like when they see you doing well, even other people that you think of as like doing better than you or on the same level are like, ah I don't know. They're going to say no. So I think it is important to ask. And what I've learned is like, if you, if you ask in the right way and you're not a psycho, cause I, I mean, I've had people come to me real crazy after I started working with Sirius XM and they were just like, put me on your show. Like not even, I'd love to be on it. They were like, Hey, put me on your show or Hey, put me in touch with the, that's not a question. That's a, that's a demand, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not coming from confidence either, right? It's not coming from a place of it's coming from entitled a place of entitlement. Entitlement, right? which I'm not I don't react well we to. Don't, no. But I find that like, you know, if you if you approach things well and with sincerity, it, here's another thing. Like, there's a there's if I don't if I genuinely don't like somebody, I'm not gonna fuck with them. And and that means I'm also not gonna ask them for favors. Like if you because it's just like we're crisscrossing our worlds then and i don't want that Mm -hmm. 
And I think a lot of people keep people in their lives that they actively don't like because they're like, well, I might need a favor from them. And that's just such yeah. a toxic way to operate. We were just having a conversation right before we came into mm-hmm. the studio today about the like someone who was like that and was like, better just not not to, to engage, not yeah. to do the dance with that yeah. whole situation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, just I'll, I'll stay cordial, but only because I don't want like drama in yeah, my of work course. life. Always you know? be civil, always be pleasant, yeah. always be polite, but we don't need to yeah. touch it. But I think ask, ask for what you want always. Yeah. And if the answer is no, it's like, okay, did you only want one thing? <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Go ask for more shit. <laughs> Just keep asking. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You'll yeah. get some you of it. Plugs? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. I All mean, that's plugs. an awesome way to end. So I'm going <laughs> to ask asking. you <laughs> yeah. for some plugs and then people uh-huh. should fuck with you because you're yeah, asking I'll them to fuck you. with you. Yes, please do. Um, I would love if everyone would follow me on Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram at Olympian Lisa Curry. Listen, I'm trying to post videos. I tried to post one today and it wouldn't, it's not working. I'm bad with technology. I am your dad. Uh, (laughs) But I'm also told that I need more Instagram followers if I want to do the road. So please help um i post lots 